Hi, my name is Claudia Bazan and today I'll introduce you to Seven Wonders Second Edition. It is a game for three to seven players with a play time of about 30 minutes by designer Antoine Bausat. Based on the mechanics of card drafting, players compete to develop an ancient civilization and build their respective wonders. The game is played during three ages in which players draft cards to access different skills, resources or victory points. After three ages, the player who collects the most victory points will be the winner. Let's see how we play it. First of all, you must create the 3H decks according to the number of players in the game. In this case, we will play with 4 players, so all the cards of the 3H that have these lower symbols of plus 5, plus 6 and plus 7 will be out of the game. In addition, for the 3rd H, we must consider a special type of cards, the purple ones. When preparing the deck of the 3rd H, the amount of purple cards equivalent to the number of players plus 2 must be added. All the cards that are left over are returned to the game box. After doing this, place the decks of the three ages in the center of the table. After this, we choose a wonder. These are quite different from each other and also have a day side and a night side. The day side is usually simpler than the night side, but the night side managed to give more awards to the player who wants to use it. In addition, in this board we can see an initial starting resource useful to build future cards in our civilization. Finally, in this board we can see the different stages of the construction of a wonder. So if we decide to build it, we can earn resources, victory points, coins and other types types of skills. Now, what can we find in these decks? These different types of structures. Brown cards represent basic resources that will be added to the initial resource of the wonder to build our civilization in a more expeditious way. The grey cards represent rare resources that have the same function as the basic ones. The blue cards give us victory points at the end of the game. The yellow cards give us a variety of special abilities to help us in the development of our civilization. The red cards represent military strength points, which will be useful at the end of each age. The green card contains three types of symbols, which depending on the amount of symbols of the same type or trios of different symbols, will give us a lot of points at the end of the game. And the purple ones, which only appear in the third age, will allow us to earn many points at the end of the game. Then, each player is dealt three initial coins. In terms of how the ages are played in this game, let's make an example of the second age. Seven cards are dealt, of which six are played in six simultaneous turns. The turns take place as follows. All players receive their hand and choose a card they would like to play. This card is put down and then the remaining cards are passed to the player on the left or right depending on the symbol of each age. Then everyone turns over their cards simultaneously, being able to perform one of the following three actions. Pay the cost of each card, or play it for free, and position it in their respective city. Play the card face down to develop the wonder and position it on their player board, paying the cost noted to activate the ability described. Or sell the card for three more coins without showing it to anyone and leave it in the discard pool. Finally, the hand is passed around until everyone has played 6 turns and the remaining cards are placed in the discard pool. There are different ways to build a structure, without cost of any kind. You don't have to pay anything. Costing resources. You have two ways to get these ones. In your own city, by putting down basic and rare resource cards or by buying them from your neighbors for a cost of 2 coins each. The player cannot refuse to be bought resources and they do not lose them either because someone else has bought this from them. With costing coins, you pay the corresponding coin when you play it. Finally, the cards have these symbols on the right side of them, which will allow us to play cards from later ages that have that symbol in the same space as the resource cost. These are called chains, and the game has a list of card types that can be found in the different ages as well as the chains that develop between different cards. After playing out each age, you proceed to a military conflict resolution stage where you count the military strength points for each player. 
Then you can bid for the one who has the most points between each neighbor on the left and right, so you'll win two of these types of tokens worth different points depending on each age. The winning player wins in the first age 1 point, in the second age 3 points, and in the third age 5 points. The loser will always win a minus 1 token regardless of the age in which the conflict takes place. Once the military conflict resolution of the third age is developed, the total points are counted in the score booklet. The first thing to count is the points shown on the sections of the wonder board that have been opened during the game. Then, one point is awarded for every three coins left over. After that, the points from the tokens of military conflicts are counted. The blue cards, certain points that may be on the yellow cards, the points earned for the number of different green card symbol of the same type that the player has, and finally, for the purple cards. It is worth noting that the game incorporates three help sheets that can be distributed among the players. These indicate all the types of skills found on the structure cards, especially the yellow and purple cards, and also incorporates certain harder to remember skills from certain ages of the wonders. Well, that's the game explanation, and now I'll tell you what I think about this game. It is a game that presents you a lot of interesting decisions to make because you're aware that you will not be able to boost all type of cards so there's a balance between boosting certain structures but not being left behind for example with the military or with the yellow ones that open a lot of abilities. This is why it also features several ways to win. We have played this game a lot of times and I have seen many different ways to win to emphasize each of different type of structures. So although this game may have a reduced replayability in terms of always using the same cards, for me, the replay value is presented in the level of tactics that can be developed each game, depending on the cards that are coming to you. So one day I'll say, hmm, I'm getting a lot of scientific cards. I'll collect every one of them to get a lot of points. Or another day I can say, um, I'll intend to boost up my military power. So you can do whatever you want to. I'd like to point out that it has three expansions which give players new dynamics, skills, boards and ways to earn points. So that when you feel you have done everything the game presents to you, um, you can add this and I assure you that you will have seven wonders for a while. In addition, it is suitable for people with color blindness as each color is marked with a particular symbol. Um, I always appreciate board games that do that. It is a game that it scales well, but with 6 and 7 players it can become a little longer, um, depending on how long it takes for each of them to choose their cards. One of the problems with this game is that in games with 5 to 7 players there can be inaccessible resources, especially rare ones, since you are limited to buying resources exclusively from your neighbor players. Um, it can happen that rare resources accumulate on the other side of the table, this can cause that in the last age you cannot build certain structures, especially the purple cards, that cannot be built via chains either. Anyways, the game has ways to alleviate this deficit, for example through yellow cards that give you resources, but if you do not get access to rare resources it can become very frustrating not be able to build structures during the last age. This is one of my favorite games which has turned out pretty well in more advanced or beginner groups and I really don't know anyone who hasn't been amazed with the possibility of building their civilization in such a dynamic way with so many decisions that feel crucial and with quite elegant and neat graphics. That's why I'll give this one a 9 out of 10, meaning we have a seal of excellence for 7 wonders. Thanks for watching, I'm Claudia Bazan and I'll see you in another round.